Today I'm continuing the Western style theme on the Green Aqua YouTube channel. I'm going to plant and finalize this 120 P tank. Stay with me. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. The good thing about not building the tank in one go is that you have time to work on the hardscape. So what happened since last week when I did the build? Did you guys see this last week? These are cacti, suero cacti. And Victor comes in and he tells me that there's too much plastic on the channel. Huh? Huh? How about that? I'm not going into the nature aquarium direction. I'm gluing too much. I'm using artificial elements in the aquarium too much. He's kind of right, but I love this. I mean, I love cheesy stuff from time to time, but actually the other guys have told me as well that it's a problem to have these cacti at the end or in the background of the aquarium because then it will reduce the scale. So it would be much better to have them in the foreground. So one change that I did is that I'm moving everything from the back to the front and also, I am not using as many cacti as planned at the beginning. I'm going to use four, which is an even number, but I'm going to use three on the left side. I'm going to use only one on the right side. Actually, Gary was kind enough to uh, apply some Taxifilum barbieri onto this one. Thank you, Gary. These look much better than in white, right? They look a lot more natural. Another good thing about this cactus is that if I introduce it here in the foreground, I can remove it for maintenance. So I can just take it out of the water, put it in a bucket, trim it, because this Toxifilum barbieri will develop runners. It will just grow bigger, so I need to like to have the gap between the branches visible. So I will need to trim it and then I can just reintroduce it like this. And voila. This one was a bigger one. I will put it right here. The smaller one, it could go here. This one needs to be straightened up like that. So how about planting into the desert? Are there plants in the desert? Actually, if you do study what's happening in the desert, obviously, most of that landscape is just rocks and sand. But if you look at the uh, Suaro forest, then, then you see that there are a lot of cacti and other vegetation, which is tolerating the dry environment and it's just growing there. So the, the desert can be actually really green. So these are the plants that I thought that would be useful. Obviously, I love the uh, Pogostemon Helferi. And this looks like a cactus when you actually apply it in small patches. The next one that I'm using is the Aerocaulon. We used Aerocaulon brevis capum before, but this one is a smaller plant. So this Aerocaulon will not grow as big, but it will look like the great cactus. Again, the idea is to use these in patches and make sure that we don't have a carpet. So we have like, a, like islands of plants everywhere. The next one is the uh, Taxifilum flame, the flame moss, and that will, you know, grow upwards and it, you can also see the different stripes. So this looks a lot like a desert tolerating plant. See, it just grows up like this and I could just apply it anywhere. So this is just going to grow up there. And then we can use the Helantium tenelum red. It looks a lot like the Aerocaulon at this moment, but it's a different plant. 
And then we've got the uh, Tenelum Green. This will develop runners, as you can see. Okay, so what happened in the scape? I thought that the scape was too low. There was too much white space in the middle. So it was not full. I didn't use the space as much as I could. So I, I started to build up with rocks in the background. My problem with this scape was that it was empty at the top. So this whole V-shaped structure there in the middle was empty. I didn't use the space fully. So now I thought that it would be a good idea to add some rocks to the background as well by moving the uh, cacti forward. And then I realized that the uh, petrified wood that we've been using in the front is just not good for the background. It doesn't have a texture. It doesn't add anything to the layout. So I came up with the idea to use a second type of rock. And that rock is the pagoda stone. And I never do this. I never use two types of rocks in the same layout because I think that if the rocks do not match, uh, then uh, it would be a problem. But I found that the color and the texture of these two rocks is matching completely. And I like the idea that this has vertical lines and this has horizontal lines in the background. So you can actually, you know, feel the, the, the distance, feel the uh, depth of the scape much better. As you can see, the white background has been reduced in volume a lot. You remember that first I introduced some lava stones to the back, like a filler to fill up the space below the uh, Amazonia, the soil that I introduced later. And then what I did is uh, following um, Josh Sims, he built the same place, the same tank uh, two years ago, one of the most popular videos uh, on this channel. And then he said that it's not a problem to have the sand on top of the soil. So I started to, to just pour some sand in there because if we're just planting scarcely and, and have patches of plants, I don't want the, the brown soil to be visible. That's not very desert-like. And actually, please note guys that the new Colorado sand is much, a lot more reddish than the old one. You can see the difference in color, can you? This is the old version, this is the new version. Gary has just finished the last cactus. I don't like the fact that uh, it's growing out of a rock. So let me see if I add some sand at the bottom, like that. Is that helping? Uh -huh, it looks much more natural. We could move this here. The last plant is a crypt, I'll be the brown. And these are big plants, so these will live probably in the foreground somehow. So these crypts are growing here then. We need one more. I'll be the brown. And then just one of each. So in the meantime, I will continue with the flame moss and I will add the flame moss in certain spots because moss is kind of an epiphyte plant. It could grow on anything. You don't need to plant it. This looks a lot like a desert plant now, right? Thank you, Gary. Which one is the green and which one is the red? Uh, this is the green, this is the red. How do you know? Because the red was thinner and taller. The key is not to use too many plants, right? because this helps a lot. Let's see the bigger Pogostemon plants. I've got one more pot of Pogostemon and I want it to finish the foreground with that. 
and then we can move on to the uh, Helantium tenelum red. I try to keep the reds in the middle. Well, I have no idea what kind of fish are we going to use. I will f just finalize it and then we could use whatever fish we can. I think that if we use some black fish in there, like black neon tetras, for example, that would look good because they would look like, like birds on the sky. Now that we're not moving into the nature direction. I think this is cool and I'm going to move with the aerial kaulon now and I will only use that in the background as a, like a far distant plant. Well, you worry, worry, it's no hurry Cause we got all the time we need If we're in love, then we'll succeed I heard laughter, I heard music I thought, baby, there's no way we could ever lose it There's no way we could ever break Tanellum green, I will just use one small patch. The idea is to plant scarcely. We don't want to have any carpets here. And here you can see how the Aereo Kaolon looks when it's actually flowering. I wonder if I could use this as an epiphyte plant. So I will try to put it here to see what happens. I definitely don't want to use any plants here. What do I do with the Fissidens? It would look great if I just put it in the cracks. Fifty-eight minutes and I'm done. I think it's like a personal record for this type of plants. Let's keep these plants patchy with maintenance. Let's uh, try to not let the runners spread. Let me know what you think. I know this is not one of the most natural builds that I did. It's like a flashback to the uh, desert scape that I did many years ago. And I promise you that next time I will do more natural stuff, okay? Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think of the desert. And we'll see you with the next video. Goodbye.